Good evening. It's good to see you again for a session together for a Wednesday night Bible study. I am excited about uh, all the things happening around the uh, church right now. We've got um, construction going on. We have got a lot of uh, great things that are happening. Uh, just today, our uh, HVAC guys were here running some uh, flex duct into our uh, children's rooms and uh, the areas of our educational uh, center and uh, a lot of a lot of good things happening. So uh, we're excited about that. All of our uh, ceiling grid is up in uh, most of the educational area except for one or two of our smaller uh, areas that is uh, our closet. It's uh, you know, we only have one of those, so uh, a few of uh, things like that that needs a little bit of attention. So, um, great things are going on. Um, if you were here Sunday, uh, I know that we discussed uh, some of our new elements of, of uh, some uh, restrictions and things that uh, have uh, surfaced again, and I know that masks are being required and uh, restaurants and in many places and so as uh, as pastor we know that the, uh, the COVID uh, virus has been something that has uh, touched our church in uh, in various families and in situations so we're praying for everyone and we want the Lord to continue to help and bless and to be able to uh, give uh, peace and and uh, blessings in the midst of troubled times. Though we know we're in troubled times, we know that God is our strength. We spoke of this uh, Sunday, and, and we are very grateful for God's goodness in the midst of these times. So we are very, very thankful for each one of you continuing to remain faithful, continuing to uh, stay connected, and we are very, very thankful. We want you to continue to reach out if there's anything at all that uh, you guys are are needing. We want the Lord to uh, to help and bless in those times, and we want God to, to do something special in uh, in uh, your life and in the life of of uh, everyone at Lifegate Church. We're very very thankful for God's blessings. So tonight. Uh, Having, uh, having studied uh, some talking about strength and knowing that as a church we need uh, encouragement, we need uh, strength from, from God above and knowing that He is well able and He's wanting to do something great uh, in us, through us. I commend you uh, for being resilient, for continuing on. I know that in many ways we have not been touched uh, as uh, greatly as many places, as many areas, as many churches, and we are uh, definitely understanding of, of uh, those situations, and we want to continue to lift up our, our uh, brothers, our sisters, the other churches. We want God to continue to uh, reach, bless, and move in their life, because God is able, and we may be the ones at this moment that if we are strong, then we want to hold up, we want to lift up our brother, our sister, and let God uh, use us in this uh, time and in this uh, kingdom that He is king of. Not us, but that He has got everything um, uh, in control, and we know that we want Him to receive glory and honor. Tonight, I'd like for us to look once again into the Word of God. Colossians 1 and 9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power with all patience long suffering with joyfulness now, I know that we have referred to this verse of scripture uh, during this time 
uh, because it is a, a, a scripture of, of strength that is one that helps us. I want you to know right now that, that right now in the midst of these times, I want to talk to us just for a moment about being empowered for the work. We know that God is the one that is, is, is helping us. We know that it is He that is strengthening us. And uh, we want God to do something great. But uh, I began to uh, think and to be able to uh, um, consider that right now many are not standing on their own strength, but they're standing on the strength that only God can give. The strength that He has given to us, the one that is our Savior, is the one that is, is reaching into our life, and He is giving us the courage and strength for where we're at right now. This particular verse of Scripture is one that some of the theologians have looked at. Why? Because in the middle of this uh, verse, one will see that Paul is is not ceasing to pray and as pastor I want you to know we're praying for you and our desire is that you are going to be continue to be filled with uh, the knowledge of his will and wisdom and spiritual understanding the church today needs God's wisdom and needs the spiritual understanding for the time for where we're at and the things that we're going through the things that we are facing and as a church I want us to walk worthy pleasing God. You know, I see a lot of things going on and see uh, things that, that I, I know that, that God cannot be pleased with. But I know this, as a church, we want to be fruitful in every good work and increasing. But we do this, but we are focusing tonight and understanding that, that uh, this is through the strength that God gives us. You know, he says unto all pleasing, and I, and I look at that and, and uh, look at some of the commentators and what they have have, uh, have speculated and, and their understanding far greater than mine. And, and uh, Adam Clark uh, mentions that doing everything in the best manner, in the most proper time, and in a becoming spirit. Now there's there's three things there. What uh, I can say that whenever tough times come around, we maybe we're not always in our best manner. Maybe we're not in the best time. It doesn't feel like the best time for us. That we could do this better at another time, and sometimes even not in the most becoming spirit. But even a good work, even doing a good work, can be marred and rendered. He says fruitless by being done improperly, out of season, or in a temper of mind that grieves the Holy Spirit. So it's important for us whenever we are in tough times and we need the strength of God in order for us to do things that are fruitful. We've got to remember we can, we can do things, uh, the, do the right things the wrong ways, and we've, we've discussed that before. But this is looking and saying, God, give us the strength that we need to be fruitful in this time. We want to be fruitful in this time. We want the wisdom and knowledge of God for what we are facing. You see, Adam Clark, uh, he, he, he stresses that Paul exhorts the Christians. Um, he exhorts them to walk. So in other words, we've got to be active in our Christian calling. Right now, we are being told a lot of times to stay at home, sit down, don't do anything. And, uh, and so uh, we've got to remember, in, in order for us to be fruitful in these times, how can we be walking? Can, can, can we utilize things uh, that we have at our disposal? Right now, we're doing things online. We're doing things. What, we are utilizing some things that makes us active even though we're not physically at the church right now, even though we're not physically greeting one another, a text message, a phone call, that is being active. That is being active in our Christian calling. I want to say to you today, let's make sure that we maintain our activity in the church, doing the church work. Church work is not just walking through the door and being involved. 
but uh, most of our church work is, is being involved outside of the church, being able to reach. And there's stuff that is internal. There's things that we're doing together. There's things that's there. But there's also things that we can do. Our prayer life can grow right now in a time of confinement. Our prayer life can, can, can become a greater focus within our life, and that's being active, tearing down strongholds, being involved in, in this is our Christian calling. And then he points out to walk worthy. In other words, suitably, he says, to the dignity of that calling and to the purity of that God has called them to in the state of salvation. In other words, we, we are not slacking up. We're not letting up. We're not looking for ways to do less. We're not looking for ways to do less for God in our, in our stand for Him, in our knowledge of Him. But we want to be able to, to do our very best. We're not looking to let go of doctrines. We're not looking to let go of law. We're not looking to let go of commandments and looking for ways. We're looking for ways to grow. We're looking for this process. We're looking for the progress to continue in our life. Just because we have these tough times does not mean that the church is not going to progress. It doesn't mean that the church is going to stop and that it's going to stop walking worthy. No, we're going to keep putting our best foot forward. He says, thirdly, to do everything unto all pleasing, that God might be pleased with the manner, with the time, with the motive, with the disposition, with the design and act of uh, object of every act. You and I, we, we are doing things to please God ultimately. You see, pleasing people is one thing, but pleasing God is another thing. I know that there is times that in pleasing people, I'm pleasing God. In pleasing people and helping people because that is what we have been called to do. It is something that, that is pleasing unto Him. But there's other times that I have to stand strong. No matter what our society is doing, no matter what our society is saying, we're going to stand strong on the Word of God. We're not here to hurt, we're not here to harm, but neither are we here to go against the commandments of God. We've got the doctrines that are founded in God's Word, and we're not here to throw those away. We're here to stand strong on those. We're here to commit those to God. We want to please Him. We want to please Him in our manner, in our time, in our motive, in our disposition, in our design, and in every act. He also says that they might be fruitful, being being harmless would would not be sufficient. God has, has sown good seed, and whenever he has, has sown good seed, he expects good fruit. I want to see good fruit in my life. I want to see good fruit in your life. I want to see you being a shining example, for you being able to see the great things of God manifest in your life. He, he uh, goes on to, to state that, that um, that every work should be good, that they must not be fruitful in some works and fruitless in others. I think that this is a great time for us to be able to analyze our, our Christian walk and for us to be able to say, okay, where was I falling short? Where was I, was I, I needing improvement? And we can do some self-reflection. And instead of us saying, that's my thorn, that's my weakness, watch me do this again, we can work on those things and say, guess what? I'm going to improve. Right now, I can improve who I am. I can improve. This is it's not a self-help group. This is us saying, God, give me the strength, give me the courage to rise above those things right now. Help me to be able to overcome. Now's not a time for me to be giving in, letting down, letting up, but now's a time for me to be claiming new territory. Maybe it is that I'm able to focus individually on me, that I'm able to focus and be able to say, God, let me be able to improve. I want to be more fruitful. I want to take the areas that I have not seen fruit come from. Say, Pastor, what about those things? Well, some of those things we know. They're some of our hang-ups. They are. Maybe it's time for us to, to, to conquer some of those fruitless 
lands of ours, some of those fruitless areas and say, you know what, I don't want to have just fruitfulness. You know, it's kind of like the guy that goes to the, the uh, gym and he decides I'm right-handed, so therefore I'm going to just work out with my right arm. And I'm going to work out just my right leg. Well, all of a sudden, we kind of would see that uh, we look a little one-armed. And we look like we're only building on one side. As Christians, we want to be abounding in all. We want to grow in the process. That means, I can tell you right now, there is very little that I can do left-handed. I, uh, I am not the guy that you want to, uh, to, to do a lot of things left-handed and, uh, and I understand that I have to work on some of those things. And I know that I will never be quite as good left-handed, but I don't want to be fruitless. There's a difference. Knowing that I am not my best there is one thing, but declaring it fruitless is another thing. I want to say, God, I want to increase his sex. sixth point was that they should increase in religious knowledge as time rolled on, knowing and becoming uh, more experienced, more of God, more of his love, more of his peace day by day. You and I, we go through trials, we go through tribulations. James 1 says, My brother, and count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Never pray for that. I don't pray for that. However, I do know this. In our work, we see that through this trial, through the trials of life, it works patience in our life. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I know this. God wants us to excel. God wants us to be entire. He wants us to be perfect. Keep letting God do something great. Don't give up. He is your strength. He is the source of your strength. Philippians 4 and 13 still says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He is our strength. He is our source. Make up our mind. I can conquer those fruitless areas. I can overcome these things. What did we speak of Sunday? Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes, God is able. Yes, God wants there to be exceeding abundance in our life. He wants us to be able to receive above what we ask or think. Why? Because it's His power working in us. On my own, I can be very fruitless. On my own, there is areas that I can just totally give up on. But when I come to grips and I say, God, work in me, work through me, then I know that it's not my power, but it's His power. It's His strength working in us. He empowers us for the work. He gives us the strength we need for the work. His burden is light. If we're trying to pull our own burden, then we know that on ourselves we're going to fail. But we know that He is able. Because He's the one that gives strength. Remember Sunday, we looked at it. Psalm 68, 35. O oh God, Thou art terrible out of Thy holy places. The God of Israel is He that giveth strength and power unto His people. Blessed be God. You are going to be strengthened. You are going to be empowered for the work that is before you if you're calling on the name of Jesus. Understanding that Colossians 1 is telling us, it is telling us that we, we are here walking in the strength with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Yes, friends of mine, he's got the strength we need. He's got the power that we need. Let's be patient. Let's be long suffering. Let's let God work through us. We are empowered 
for the work. Believe me, there is days right now in going through this building process that we know there's challenges that we face, there's things that's happening, but I know that God has the strength for every single one of us. We will prevail. The end is getting near. Phase one is coming close to a conclusion for us building life. Who knows that right now there's a phase that you're standing, you're looking in the eye, and God's got another plateau. God's got another place for you, another area to conquer, another area to say, watch us be fruitful. Watch us grow this. Watch us do something great. Why? Because God's going to do it. He's got the mind. He's got the power. Let's let him do something great. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for letting God work in your life. Though we may not be in a church building together tonight, I know this. We can be bound in spirit. We can have a common love and we can have a common knowledge that we're saying, God, let your will be worked at LifeGate Church. Let your presence and your power be manifest in every single family. Let his blessings rain on us. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you have a very wonderful, wonderful Wednesday evening. To God be the glory.